Top Med Talk. Welcome to Top Med Talk. We are here in Washington, D.C. for the American Society for Enhanced Recovery annual meeting. I'm Desiree Chapel, your host and managing editor of Top Med Talk, and we're joined by Monty Mythen, who is our editor-in-chief. Hey, Desiree, how you doing? I'm great, Monty. How are you? I'm good. Are you hanging I'm in there? Stuck. I am. I'm feeling a little bit of the jet lag at the moment, I must admit. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it happens because you happen. flew straight in, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we got in late enough last night to be waking up. Was the yeah, <laughs> that's usually the way it goes for you Did guys. Did you get that as well, Mike? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, so um, we're joined by our very special friend of Top Med Talk, Mike Grocott. How are you, Mike? I'm very good, thank You're, you. Are you jet lagging too? A little bit, but I got up early and went for a run and feel better because of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was up at three. Ah, yeah. What time do an you? email. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, um, Mike, thanks for sitting down with us. I know we, we pulled you away from something. What were you doing? So we are just setting up for the uh, CPET, the cardiopulmonary exercise testing workshop uh, here at ASA 2019. Nice. You guys get to do another one of those, huh? Is yeah, it... they seem to be increasingly popular. That's good news. Um, John, John Whittle uh, yeah, from say Duke, John Whittle, who, right? who's, uh, who's very much a leader in this field over here, um, is saying he's getting a lot more interest kind of month by month at the moment, having done presentations at uh, the, some of the EBPOM meetings yeah. uh, and, and now ASA. Yeah, awesome. We were just with him last month. He was there with us for the EBPOM meeting. He said it was really, really a lot of great interest from that. And, and any sense from him why the change has happened? I, I just think it's it, uh, exposure. exposure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that now it's, it's, it's there on the stage. People are hearing a little bit more. Um, did, maybe the Met study, but I'm not say, sure. Did Mets help? Or did you, it's, it's an opportunity to show evidence that it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Well, so um, what are you all planning for today? What does that kind of look like, the, the uh, workshop? So we have a, a demonstration mm-hmm. uh, of an exercise test. Um, is John getting on the bike? He is not. Oh. He's, a, he's a little bit oh. tired. Are you new baby, not a lot of sleep, you know. Okay. Um, oh, and, and I'm gosh. not getting on the bike because I went for a run. I can't do more than one lot of exercise in one day. But, um, but Joe, who came on a run with me, seems capable of doing more than one lot of exercise in a day. Oh. So he's going to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to exhaustion? To VO2 y- yep, max? Yep, yep, yep. Right. I need to get on that thing. Mm. I'm just a little scared. but Yeah, so an incremental test to, uh, to exhaustion. So starting off unloaded cycling and then gently increasing until you can't do it anymore. Well, good. So um, all, all the, everybody's making the right noises over here in the U.S. Do so you think that it's going to start to? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to start. Uh, based on experience elsewhere, it's going to be a long journey. Yeah. I mean, the, the uptake from the very first centers that started testing in the U.K., um, say Torbay and York and UCLH, uh-huh. was pretty much the turn of the millennium or maybe a little right. bit afterwards. And it, it took probably a decade until it became an embedded, you know, commonly embedded uh, method of pre-assessment and, and we're still on the, the growth curve. So we're probably up to about two thirds of centres in the UK now have, uh, are using cardiopulmonary exercise testing as part of their pre-operative evaluation. pre-operative evaluation. So there's a big meeting that's coming up, right? In London. In London, right? We have right? some flyers on the desk. We have a flyer here that says the annual London Perioperative Medicine Congress in association with the Prehabilitation World Congress and Poets Annual Congress, British Museum London, 1st to the 4th of July. There you go. You heard so it not here first, maybe, but... <laughs> so you did hear about. it here first because I took a microphone to the second World Prehab Congress. You did. You did. You we were, did. Uh, and we announced it at that point that, the, that it was coming to London this year. Yeah, so right. uh, the first Congress was held in Montreal, um, chaired by Franco Carli legend of prehabilitation and then the second meeting went to holland uh and the third one is is going to be in london uh this summer uh and we're we're very excited i think i think we're going to have a uh full auditorium at the at the bridge museum a lot of uh abstracts uh been submitted uh so if people are interested they probably probably better think about booking now because we're getting short on places yeah those poets courses um are always Four, aren't they? And the poets are Fantastic. always fully subscribed. Yeah. Um, we have three this year. Um, Danny Levitt, who runs the courses, they put in a, a, an extra course for the prehab meeting because there was quite a lot of interest from people coming to the prehab meeting about what exactly was involved in cardiopulmonary exercise testing. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a cultural divide, if you like. The Canadian flavor of prehab has 
traditionally uh, revolved around six-minute walk tests, and the mm-hmm. UK version has traditionally revolved around CPET. So, so at the moment, we're all learning from each other uh, about how to do the, the alternative approach. So is there a big debate during the... Have you set that up during the meeting? <laughs> I, thought, no, I, thought, it, I thought Matt showed the six-minute walk test that was pretty useless. So that's not yet published. Okay. Well, the so, presentation um, from the primary author presented data that I think I photographed and tweeted. You did. But, you did. <laughs> but, it, but it's not out in the journals yet. <laughs> Sorry, journals. <laughs> Do you do you think that when it does come out, it might perhaps <laughs> say the same? Oh, I think thing? maybe that's quite likely. Okay, gotcha. When will it be out? Do you know? I don't. Um, I, I think it's coming soon, but I, I don't know a date. I mean, the paper that did come out was the one that said the six-minute walk test was predictive of disability-free one-year survival. Was that right? Or from in, the Australian, from the Australian group. group. Yeah. yeah, but but no more predictive than some of the other simple tests. Like Correct. That. Yeah. But the real question we had is, is it different to the predict- prediction of major complications done by objective exercise testing? And from what I saw presented, I thought it was pretty, it was an open meeting. So I mean, it, was, it was out there, it was at the SPACI meeting mm-hmm. um, in Orlando, was that it had, it was not very good at predicting major complications. That's a six minute walk test. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So why do people want to learn it then? What's the point well, well, number one, that, that information is not in the public domain. You, you, you are privileged in it your... It is now. It is. Um, uh, and it's just, uh, to be honest, I think it's at the moment it's more those who have not been uh, used to cardiopulmonary exercise testing are keen to get a handle on it because it's, uh, some of the protocols now are very much based on that. Uh, but, but certainly the current studies being run out of, uh, of Canada are still six-minute walk test based. Right. Yeah. And, and probably both approaches in, in terms of uh, setting up a prehabilitation program. Yeah. But both approaches are a, a, an effective catalyst for getting people exercising more. Where, so where, whether there's a, a nuance of one over the other in terms of uh, effectiveness is uncertain. I mean, we, we talked about this before, but the um, assumption is sort of the six-minute walk test is somehow free. Mm-hmm. That it has no real estate requirement, it has no manpower requirement, it has no equipment requirement, it's which is, which is none of that's true. And, no. and the real estate requirement is not insignificant. If you, in our central London hospital, which has a tiny footprint, freeing up a corridor or whatever it is to do the six minute walk test is a non starter. There was nowhere to do it. And you need a person, and the no. person has to be pretty well trained. Um, and and a, so it, it probably has lower resource implications than doing a full yeah. cardiopulmonary exercise test, but equally the outputs are much less refined. So you get a lot less information from that test. Because you don't get your stress ECG at the same time. Don't get you your don't stress get ECD, your some of the ventilation. Tests. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, what are some of the other highlights that you're um, excited about for the uh, prehab meeting coming up this summer? So we have the launch of um, a big initiative we've had in the UK, which was a joint... Uh, project between Macmillan, who's one of our big cancer charities, and the Royal College of Anesthetists and the NIHR, which is our National Health Research Funder, mm-hmm. uh, have been running a, a, a principles and guidelines on prehabilitation um, for people living with cancer. So, so much broader than the surgical context. So also encompassing uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy and, and increasingly some of the novel uh, biological therapies. Uh, And that document, which has been in preparation through a number of different expert groups over the last year, will be launched on the evening of the first day of the Prehab Congress. So that's that's, uh, something we're very excited about. Yeah, that's very, very cool. Um, And some of the other speakers, you guys are going to be talking a lot more about the the METS trial. I know we've talked a lot about that on... uh So we have Dominda uh, Wichisandera coming over from Canada, uh, Franco Carly uh, and uh, Daniel Santamina, uh, other speakers from Canada... Uh, we've got some representatives from the Barcelona group who uh, have published the only study so far that's really got solid clinical outcomes attached to it. Um, for, for which, Mike? For, for the, the Barcelona group. So the for Barbara, solid clinical outcomes for prehabilitation. Prehabilitation yep. in uh, intra-abdominal surgery yep. uh, and a reduction in complications, which okay. is very enticing. Yeah. Is that, is that that's published, is it? That's published uh, a couple of years ago now in Annals of Surgery. Right. They did a they did a six minute walk test based uh, approach and it was both a physical exercise and psychological. Uh, so using the six minute walk test as a determination of baseline and then 
improvement over time? Or? Uh, n- n- not entirely clear. It was it okay. was a it was physio led, so they had both uh, a background uh, encouragement for activity along with an exercise intervention. Mike, before we um, take off, I did want to ask you about the Royal College of Anesthetists, the Anesthesia 2019 meeting that's coming up. Yep. Um, that is in just less than a month, right? It is. Is it my month? 20th to 22nd of May. Yeah. Uh, and guess who's going to be there? Guess who? Who's going to be there? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> Top Med Talk. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, and, and of course, the exciting thing there is the launch of the uh, Centre for Perioperative Yay. Care. So, um, led by the Royal College of Anesthetists, but, yeah. but very much engaging with uh, our colleagues in surgery, medicine, general practice, so family medicine, uh, the Royal College of Nursing, and patient groups um, to, to have a true multidisciplinary, multi specialty uh, centre uh, at a national level. And will you all have appointed a director by then? We will. The, uh, the name of he or she uh, will be announced at that meeting. Oh, oh but, that's cool. But that appointment's made soon or right on the cusp of it? Next Friday. Oh, excellent. It's not going to be me. It's not going to be me either. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did an application. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> that would be kind of a dream job, though. And we have Pretty a deputy cool. director role coming up once once we've appointed the Oh, uh, so it's not too late. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Commute's a bit ugly. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, that's cool. So what else? What are you guys looking forward to um, for that? for that meeting so uh, a launch that, event yeah. great lineup of speakers uh, yeah. number of uh, familiar faces over here probably less well known in the UK so we've got Paul Wishmeyer uh, oh, coming over uh, we've got some interesting chat around the opioid epidemic yeah, and, uh, in the context of the UK um, and a whole variety of, of, uh, of other speakers over three days biggest meeting we've ever had so pushing over 400 folk um, in wow. a venue just by St. Paul's uh, in London. Yeah. Uh, so we're hoping that will that'll be a, a great three days. And you guys are sold out on that, aren't you? We're sold out. Fantastic. It's going to be a great meeting. We were there last year and just really thoroughly yeah, enjoyed. Excellent. Yeah. Well, enjoyed I, I hope you also meeting. join us next year. So the 2020 meeting is going to be in Manchester. And, um, and the venue uh, and arrangements will be unveiled at the oh. 2019 meeting. Interesting. Unveiled. I know. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. The, the venue's quite appealing. Yeah. Yeah. What's up there in Manchester? Football That's cool. stadiums. For yeah. example. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That Sorry, football yeah. isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a, a, where you kick the ball or throw the ball? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a clue in the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't help because they call football over here something where they throw the they ball. They throw the ball. Yeah, but we call football something that you use the foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you use the foot in your football too, don't you? A couple times here oh, and there okay. during, the, during the course of a long game. But anyway, well, that sounds great. Fantastic. Well, um, hopefully we'll see you there, Mike. Yeah, look, forward, a, to, look forward to catching up in London. Uh, I've got to go into a session in a second and listen to Tony Senegal talking about AKI. Yes, we do. We need to catch up on some of those. So it's going to be great. Good to talk to you, Mike. Yeah. Thanks As for having always, me on. thanks so much for listening. Top Bed Talk. Top Bed Talk. Nima Jerison here. Thanks for listening to Top Med Talk. Now, before we let you go, it's important that we remind you to subscribe to Top Med Talk. That way you'll never, ever miss another episode. Also, if we could encourage you to join us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, pretty much every single social media platform, we're there. Join us. And finally, check out topmedtalk.com. If you go to our website, you can subscribe to email updates. That way we can always tell you where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing and how you can join us. Topmedtalk.com and click on the section marked email updates. Finally, Top Med Talk is proud to act as the broadcasting arm of EBPOM, evidence-based perioperative medicine. We'd love you to find out more about them as well. EBPOM.org is their website. That's E-B-P-O-M.org. And if you go to EBPOM.org forward slash meetings, you can find out about some of the wonderful meetings that we attend and cover across the year here on Top Med Talk. That's EBPOM.org forward slash meetings.